And now I'm going to lean away from the microphone and loudly and obnoxiously clear my throat. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I like to hear. Oh, God. The waveform looks abysmal. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's great. Don't worry about it. What a dreadful podcast. <laughs> Are you ready, kids? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Subject High, the only podcast on the internet with the guests who do. I am your host for this episode and all episodes, Hookaloof 24, a bear. And for this episode, we bring on the optimum... Ugh, fuck, I can't even speak. No! <laughs> that's it, that's the intro! No, no, it can't be, it can't be, I can edit the show! <laughs> you need to have, like, a blooper segment. <laughs> This whole oh, this whole show is this whole show is a blooper segment. <gasps> Hi everybody, welcome to the podcast. Today we have D. Hi. Hurry. I am D. I funny squee, and sometimes I make the girls go ooh wee wee. <laughs> Are they French? <laughs> uh, no comment. All right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show. This is the absolute worst fucking start I've ever had. This is off the rails almost immediately. Listen, man. It's this is a free form podcast, from what I've heard, from what I from what I've gathered. Um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't have it any. Of course, someone invites me to an Xbox party. <laughs> I'll oh be on God. later, boys. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I'd say I'd say it adds to it in a way. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't sweat over it, bud. It is it is the podcast equivalent of jazz. I'm not mm. gonna play the notes right. I'm gonna have a bad intro. And the audio is not going to be great. You might even hear a click. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's like it's like if you've ever listened to like really shitty death metal, it always sounds like they record in like they record in somebody's fucking outhouse, and they're recording on like one of these really shitty Fisher Price recording toys, like where you could speak into the mic and then play it back, and like it sounds really plasticky and tinny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not death metal what we make is playmobile core <laughs> oh holy shit i apologize for how much i peak when i laugh you're gonna have fun editing that <laughs> <laughs> hey i'm, to, I'm, I'm used to, to it to behave. <laughs> it's the same it's the same way over here this is just gonna be it's it's gonna raise the ceiling of all of the all of the rest of the audio. Oh fuck yeah! Oh, now that's what's up. We like raise ceilings in this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. All right. Let's let's get into the show itself. You are an artist and a streamer, and mm-hmm. you play music as well. You do it all. You know, barely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't. Uh... I've thought about, I figured this would come up, actually, so I've been thinking about a way to sort of describe it without sounding pompous, because Let's hear it. like because calling someone a renaissance man implies that they're fancy, I'm like the white trash equivalent of that, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like a cultured hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> but You're um, not a renaissance. You're not a renaissance man, you're a renaissance man. I'm one of them there renaissance son bitches. God damn, shoo we <laughs> Y'all coming down to holler to hear me pick on the old G-tar? <laughs> G-tar. Oh my god, you just opened up like a one-two combo on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's add, com- let's add potential comedian to the list of... <laughs> I, th- I think you. I think with GTAR you've ex- you've eclipsed potential and in, into the theoretical. <laughs> into the theoretical, I am theoretically a comedian now. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all hear the one about Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, um, but no. What, what, what would what would you like to know? What part of what is the deepest, darkest parts of my heart you wish to uncover, Mister Hook uh, Eloof? That's me. Hook uh, uh, Eliasis Loof. <laughs> Eliasis. I like that. Yeah, that's me. It's from the Bible. Uh, no. Is... <laughs> I, <laughs> I was just going to ask, uh, of of those many things that you are, 
which one would you say that you are more of and how did you get your start doing that okay so definitely art um and that's actually an interesting one. I, was, <laughs> I don't want to say that I prepared for this, but I have been thinking about like just my past leading up to this podcast because I've never done this before, right? Okay. So, you know, I would say I'm an artist first. Everything else, I wouldn't even say second. Everything else is like in the far back of my brain, right? I've been drawing forever if I could be so bold um but i didn't seriously start working on learning to draw the way i do now until high school right it's like you know (laughs) when you're when you're in middle school you're always doodling shit right but it wasn't until like maybe seventh eighth grade that i started to try and seriously create more things and just work on stuff that i thought would be kind of cool like i always had it in my head that i would want to make a comic of my own at some point maybe do like a web comic Uh, you know as you get older that shit kind of goes out the window but it did help me get to where i am today and i would say that i am about ready to make that jump if i ever get a free minute right makes sense yeah but um i guess to answer because i kind of answered half that question to answer where i got my start it would definitely be, have been in high school. Um, I actually started drawing these comics with my friends. And I, <laughs> I try to forget about these comics because when you're in high school, you're kind of a piece of shit. It doesn't matter who you are. Like, you're just kind of an asshole, right? Yeah. And, yeah, like, everybody's had it, you know. I don't think I'm saying anything brand fucking new when I bring that up. But everybody goes through this growth period that's, you know start a high school to the end of college, you become a completely different person. But um, I was not... <laughs> Those comics were very crude. They weren't very funny. In fact, I would argue some of them are actually really mean-spirited. So I try not to think about those. But, you know, that's kind of where it all started. Like, I started uploading to DeviantArt under my alias there. I was making comics. I was talking to community members. And, you know, for the most part, I hadn't sinned yet. I was a pretty good boy, but as we'll get to, you know, things, one thing led to another, and now I've wound myself up with the lovely title, A Working Artist. (laughs) So, (laughs) and now here we are, I'm on Hooky Loof's podcast, and it's actually a lot of fun. I like this. Thanks for having me on, by the way. My pleasure. This place is nothing if not a place. (laughs) A place in time. Yeah, a place that you can be in for a period and then be frozen in that 50 to 65 minute block. Oh, hell yeah. I love being frozen. That's my (laughs) (laughs) favorite. And whenever I saw that YouTube poop with like, like he work like he's in here and I'm out here. I was like, God, I wish that was me. (laughs) Where's the caveman was my sexual awakening. That's that should be on a fucking T-shirt or something. That's great. Right. I think that's the title. I think that's gonna be the title of this episode. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Fucking a. Man, it's it's funny that you bring up like that sort of period of being terrible in in high school and making comics with your friends because you have awakened a memory that I have from not high school. By high school, I had mellowed out. I was an asshole in middle school, which Mm -hmm. for some people is the same thing. But I have a distinct memory of, oh, this is going to be wildly telling if this person is secretly following me. But I had a friend who made little, like, comics of her friends and who she hung out with. And she put them on DeviantArt for all 12 of her followers. Damn. You know, just one of of, uh, an endless sum of, like, kids in middle school. But I remember very distinctly one of my first artistic endeavors was she asked if I could help her line one of her comics. And I thought I did a pretty good job, but she was wildly displeased with how I'd done it. Hmm. And so there's, there have been a lot of, there have been like several incidents in my life where I attempted to do art and take it seriously and got wild, like buck wild amounts of negative reinforcement. Jesus. (laughs) See, that's, I feel like that hurts you in the long run. 
Oh yeah, definitely. It took me it took me twenty years to get started as an artist, and I, I I spend every single day wondering what would have happened if I'd gotten started even one year sooner. Oh my god, dude! I I fucking get that. I like. The, I, and this makes me sound like a crotchety old man. I'm only 25, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, that's not what this is. This means. I swear to God, sometimes I'll see like new people enter the fandom, and like they'll be like, "Hey, you know, I'm so and so, and I'm an artist, and here's some examples of my work." And they'll be like fucking 20, and they're drawing like 10. 15 hundreds of levels higher than me and i just mm-hmm. sit there and i grip my tablet pen so hard it snaps like i'm like how did you do that like <laughs> i didn't have like did you unlock some sort of code have you just been drawing religiously like g- give me the secrets like <laughs> just <laughs> it's insane and i think about that all the time like if i had actually serious like started trying to if i had someone i should say to give me the fundamentals and what to learn like in seventh grade i would probably be hundreds of leagues better than i am now right like oh yeah it's just fucking and it's so hard to remind yourself about that right so yeah like i'm sorry if i'm going off on a bit of a tangent here but no by all means but like if you want to make shit just do it like (laughs) It's something I struggle with a lot now because, I, you know, I went to college, I studied graphic design, I I went through a liberal arts art course, and let me tell you, it's kind of rough. Like, you have to do a bunch of projects in secession, and like, do, like I did, uh, I, I say, I would say one semester, I had 22 credit hours at one point, on top of working two jobs to pay rent. <laughs> to live yeah. so you know i i've got i've got like super burnout right now in in where i am now as a creator i'm working on that um but you know like just getting that positive reinforcement and just being able to start early is such an important thing for when you want to create but that doesn't matter as long as you want to make something i think that's kind of beautiful in its own way right wow that got really deep how much alcohol is in this Eight percent. All right. Okay. Um, but anyways, my point is, um, and you know that I again, this you're gonna have fun editing this. This is a fucking roller coaster, and it's only fifteen minutes in, if that. Um, Hell yeah. <laughs> but like, if you are a creator, and especially you, Hook, this is some good advice. Just keep fucking doing it. I really respect your hustle, man. Like when you did all of those pictures for October. And, like, even squeezed in some animations. That was fucking incredible. I wish I had the stamina you did, dude. That is insane. Oh, I, I appreciate that you're complimenting me on that front, but I'm I'm currently reeling from that. It's, like, 20 days out, and it's not like I haven't made anything, but I'm far, far are the days of me doing, like, two animations in one day, or, like, an animation and a half, and then squeezing in the next day's post. Like, oh, that... That, that wellspring has dried up. Well, I, I mean, I can fucking see why, dude. You literally cranked out. You, you, if you, oh, Jesus, wow. Sorry, when I get excited, my tongue likes to make knots over itself. Um, <laughs> you were literally cranking out, it not, if not one, multiple pieces in a day just so you could get ahead. That's like something I wish I could, I wish I could do, right? Like, I feel like I'm so methodical with my pieces. I take so fucking long, and I'm always frowning because I'm like, this could look better, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But you're fucking cranking it out, and it's all really good quality, man. Like, I think you're I think you're doing a really good job, and you're improving at a pretty quick rate. And, like, you're, you're managing to learn all of these different things while working on your art style as a whole, and that's so cool. Like, I fucking... <laughs> It's like watching an it's like watching a Pokemon evolve in real time. <laughs> that might be a fucked up mental image if you depending on how you how you, how you think of it, but it's kind of cool, right? <laughs> it's I, good analogy. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm fine with that. Hell yeah, it, it fucking the the way that you phrase it makes it seem like I'm doing this Herculean fucking anime protagonist <laughs> task, and I feel like I'm I'm obligated to to talk like a fucking Gurren Lagan speech now in order to inspire the masses. But tell me my this... tummy will pierce the heavens. Do it. <laughs> oh, God. 
sorry. That might have been a little bit extra. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I just think it's good to give fellow creators a little pat on the back sometimes you know maybe i was a little bit overzealous with it but uh, i mean i, I appreciate the praise. it yeah <laughs> you deserve the I've, praise man i i was in a similar situation to you when i was getting started is the one thing that i wanted to do more than anything is i had a well at least i thought it was a an interesting concept for a web comic and I, I still feel that way but i had allowed my my ambitions to outstrip my ability so severely that I realized that it would not be for years that I could make what I wanted to make. And the thing about having an idea is that you can't put it on the back burner for years at a time and have it still come out the same vision. And that's usually for the better because over time you grow as a person and your, your experiences will, will color uh, what you create. And so the idea that you were crazy passionate about the first day that you picked up a pencil and, you know, the thing that you were working towards very swiftly, you'll realize maybe not that it wasn't good, but that your goals could be accomplished elsewhere. And that's sort of what animation has been for me is I, I'm bad at comics. I don't get panel layouts. I feel like my posing is stiff, but I like cartoons and I like animating even though it's arguably as much, if not more, work in some cases. I feel like I understand frame-by-frame frame motion and weight of movement a lot better than I do uh, dialogue bubbles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe that's to your your strength, right? <clears throat> that, Like you mentioned, as you get older, you know, your perception on, you know, personal projects you've wanted to do or just in general what you want to do is always changing, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I still have big ideas to do comics at some point. Um, but, and I think I, I think I have one that I'm going to start working on here once my commission queue is done, if it's ever done. Working 40 hours and doing <laughs> commissions is a nightmare. But It's rough. It, it sucks, man. Um, I need, you know, but it's it's good because it keeps me busy, but it's also just it's a lot you know you do that mm -hmm. on top of uh, your normal workload and you know you still gotta find time to squeeze in socialization and relaxing and any other hobbies you might want to do um, but that's a, that's a whole other topic um, point is you know as you grow as a creator whether you and like depending on whether where you start and the more you do stuff you sort of, you sort of learn what you want to do by doing and that's kind of cool right I, I don't know, there's probably some scientific, fir uh, not firm, Jesus, scientific term to describe what I'm talking about, but <clears throat> the important thing to remember is that you need to grab onto that when you can, and then just fucking roll with it, buddy. Like, you gotta fucking take that, and you need to just start planning your attack, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Man, <laughs> 8%. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! I feel like I'm a. I feel like um, like I'm I'm nowhere near drunk levels, right? But I feel like my brain is expanding, and I'm trying to come up with these really overcomplicated things to explain what I'm trying to say. But the point is, I get exactly what you're saying, and you know I, that's cool. It shows that you're learning, right? It shows oh. that you can take apart what you're doing and be like, okay, well, I like this and this, but I want to change this and this. Maybe if I take this route and do more stuff like this, I will learn to better improve upon X, Y, and Z. Like, it's 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 an interesting way to grow as a creator, and I think I've, I've sort of done the same thing. Like, I've gone back and looked at art from uh, even college, actually, to now and it's like there is actually a drastic change if not in the style more so just how you know i'm posing characters how i am handling line width i used to draw really thin lines i used to i used paint tool stuff forever i used to take the marker tool no i think it was a brush tool and i used to like sketch over the sketch but make it really refined i mean that oh that worked but that's not exactly the style I wanted, right? Makes sense. So when I switched to Clip Studio, I was looking at brush packs, and I found this really nice pen 
that has a textured edge to it. And so that's what I use to line now. And I try to make sure to emphasize very thick lines depending on the subject, right? So say for example, I'm making a tummy. It's gonna be nice and thick on the edge, right? Oh yeah. Whereas the inside details are gonna be a little bit more thin and refined. And I don't know, it just tickles me more to do stuff like that now that I figured it out than looking back at my old art and like if I was still doing the same thing, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah. I feel like I may have went on a tangent. I am so sorry. <laughs> hey, it, it's your episode, boss. You can do whatever you want with your time. It's my episode? Really? Yeah. Whoa. It's, it's, yeah. Happy All Honda right. Days. This is your present. Happy Honda Day? This ain't a Civic. <laughs> Are you not recording in a Civic? We might no. have to reschedule. Cause oh, shit. I, was, I brought my I Ford was a... Focus today. God damn it. Fuck! <laughs> Imagine if that's how interviews were done. You had to show up in a specific car, and you had to, like, buy that car. You couldn't rent it. So if you couldn't <laughs> afford the car, you'd have to, like, schedule out the the uh, interview, like, fucking 20 years in the future. <laughs> or some shit like that. <laughs> I I don't know why you're speaking about this hypothetically. This is how this podcast works. This oh, is shit. subject high parentheses in a Honda Civic. <laughs> Well, I, I might have beefed it, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, you might, well, you, might okay. need to, you might need to trash this episode. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell everyone what an embarrassment you are. Of no, stop! Focus. No! Be professional. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford. <laughs> I can't afford a Honda Civic. <laughs> oh, that was. That's actually how I'm going to do. I'm going to do live shows. Is I'm going to crash a Honda Civic into a convention center. <laughs> You gonna sell merch out of the trunk? <laughs> <laughs> out of the out of the smashed front of the car. <laughs> <laughs> the, like the fucking the fucking front is wrapped around like a like a steel beam that's in front of the convenient conven, eh, convention center. And like you pop out, you hit a button, and it just and it like creaks open. And there's just yeah. a bunch of fucking reply, like no subject yeah. high t-shirts and shit. Yeah, charred <laughs> charred t-shirts and melted plastic from, oh. from. Oh, that would be perfect. I actually, I actually did discuss. This was back before the COVID happened, and conventions became a thing of the past. But I discussed with my my editor Blue about potentially doing live shows at conventions at some point in the future. Likely not I for a couple years sick. until. That would I, be so cool, dude. I would love that. Yeah. Again, I, I have barely... It's been almost a year since I started doing this. And I don't have a year's worth of episodes because of like several month-long breaks. But I think everyone's cutting me some slack because the world fell apart. And is still not together. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, even if they weren't, you work a job too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got, I've got my 40 hour job as well. Exactly. Um, so I guess that's a topic. Um, yeah. Work, Tell work, work, life balance. Right. Yeah. Especially when the thing that you do outside of work, like drawing is more work. How do you, how does, how do you, how do you handle that? Well, truth be told, I used to be a workaholic. Um, <laughs> So, I don't know if it ran in the family or what, but my dad's exactly the same way. God, I hope he never fucking hears this. Um, <laughs> him or mom, both. Um, but uh, it, it just runs in the family. We just work, right? Like, uh, And, you know, he, he works in a garage and shit. Um, and I worked with him when I was in high school, so I'm not... It's not nothing new. But in high school, what I would do is, you know, during the summer, I practically worked a 40-hour-a-week job. I'd come home every day and just, like, uh, set up my little, my shitty little compact laptop and grab my shitty $100 Wacom tablet I bought on sale. Oh, hell like one yeah. Of the, one of the, like, not one of the really old ones, but one of the ones that had this design that, like, so where the air, the, the side where the wire came out was flat, but the rest of it was a rounded rectangle. You know what I'm talking okay. about? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> every day I would come home and I would start working. And my work process was this. I would sketch. I would do it all traditionally first. I would sketch it out on paper. I had bought like an HP printer because you couldn't find just a scanner at this point. Um, I bought a shitty like $30 HP printer just so I could scan my pictures. 
and then I would put them in paint tool saw and I would just start lining the work, right? Um, and then, you know, I'd color it in, all this stuff, and then I'd throw it up. And, you know, that's one project down. And then I'd immediately start thinking about how to do something else. Now... I have learned that I need to take better care of myself. <laughs> so, um, what I've what I've been trying to do recently, if there is an evening where I have nothing going on, you know, nobody wants to hang out on uh, Xbox or Discord. Um, if I'm not if I'm not doing my streaming thing that day, but I still want to draw, you know, like I've got commissions to work on, I'll just chill watch netflix and just work slowly and then come the weekend i'll spend actual more time working on that product to try and make some headway so i'm trying to i'm trying to make it a weekend thing right um you know with holidays and stuff i mean well the holidays right now are kind of a kind of non-existent but um you know just trying to take my weekends and use that as my project days. I mentioned earlier uh, when we were, uh, before the podcast officially, air quotes, started, that um, when I was, uh, that I'm sitting on a bunch of odds that I needed to edit, right? Um, yeah. So I, I just made that a weekend thing. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to take four hours out of my Sunday to goof off and, you know, Adobe Premiere and whatever comes out, I'm slapping it up there. Now, of course, I'm more careful with, you know, commissions and shit, but... My point is, um, I'm trying to find a way to balance it out, and if I just don't have the stones to work on something, I refuse to work on it because I'm not going to give my commissioners, my customers, a project that was made when I was feeling, you know, just run, worn down because it shows. Like, oh yeah, I, it's just I've done it before. Like, unfortunately, that's I'm going to tattle on myself. I've I've drawn commissions before while I felt like shit, whether it's just emotional or, you know, regular fatigue from being an adult. And I don't like how they turned out. Now, the commissioner is always happy. They always say I do an impeccable job. But I myself, as the creator, can tell when my, my quality is suffering because of my state. So I'm just trying to be better. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's my slogan. Try to be better. Treat yourself a little bit better if you can help it. That that seems like an, a downright honorable way to live. And stuff that I also have gotten, there are several commissions that I've done because I'll do them like after work in batches of two in the remaining hours before I pass out, or at least I used to before I lost my groove. Mm. But like there have I have had commissions that I've done wherein. I, I look at them and I go, God, this isn't good. I hope they tell me to change something, but I send it to the person and they are they are ecstatic. And I always feel so bizarre because I've had like artists who I super duper respect be like, yeah, I loved that one commission that you did for that person. And I'm like, really? I didn't even love it. And you do good work. So how the fuck do you like it? It's <laughs> It's an unfortunate part of being a creator. I don't really like to say that word because, I mean, it comes up all the time when you talk about, like, content creators or, like, it just, every time I think of creator, I think of someone who is, <laughs> it's not normally a good impression in my head, so I try to avoid it. <laughs> it's not, it's not a slight, if you, if you consider yourself a creator, I mean, I said I was a creator earlier in this podcast, I just try to avoid that word. As someone, as someone who draws, you know, big, funny, furry porn um, of a certain kind, <laughs> it's just one of those things where you have to remind yourself that the piece you're working on is not for you. Do your best, of course. That's not to say don't, don't neglect anything, but do your best, and ultimately your opinion on the piece does not matter. If the commissioner is happy... And they, you know, they show it off to everybody. And, you know, normally they do. Or eventually they will. They've probably got a backlog of art that they need to upload. Um, th they, as long as they are happy, I can say that I'm pretty stoked. Now, that being oh, yeah. said, you know, sometimes as an artist, you really... It, you feel better when you feel good about it, too, you know? That is that is something that I found myself bumping into more or less with 
works that are even like a year old. It's, I, they're not bad per se, but I know, I know, I know I can do better. And so seeing things that I, like, like a year ago, I was super duper proud of looking at them and having that, that instinctive, like cringe up inside of myself and turn into a meatball of not pleased. It's, it's a weird feeling to see, like, not only how far you've come, but like, where you used to be it's it's one thing to look at your stuff and how your styles developed to be like yeah i like that but it's another to stare what you used to look at and be like yeah i like that in the face and go wow this wasn't any good at all now was it <laughs> oh man i <laughs> i get fucking whiplash when i look at my work dude <laughs> um i i have had so many uh gallery accounts that i have abandoned um, and sometimes I'll go back to him because I don't really think, you know, they say have confidence in yourself and your product, but like, I don't really think that highly of myself as a creator. I said it again, fuck me. As someone who draws big tummy, I don't exactly consider what I'm doing, you know, to be that super great, right? <laughs> um, now, there are a few standout pieces where I'll look at it and be like, oh, man, that fucks. That is so good. Good job, me. I'll give myself a high five. Like, and I'll be like, yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's nice to look back because not only is it sort of humbling, but it's like you can – it's like it's like I mentioned before. You can point at the shit that you've gotten better at. Like, if I pulled up <laughs> – if I pulled up my first for so I reference, my first official one, which I think I did back in, like, 2013 – to the one oh that I've done recently for D, like this past year, you, you wouldn't, you you might, you'd recognize the character, but it almost looks like a completely different artist worked on it. Like, even down to like my aesthetic choices for how I wanted to show the ref off, the reference sheet off. Like, it's just different. And that's really cool. So I get exactly what you're saying, but it is also strange because it doesn't feel that long ago to you right no. like it and, and i mean you know i just mentioned something from 2013 i can remember when i still drew that like i because i put f so much fucking work into it and was like oh man this is banging and i had a friend help me work on the background for it because you know i i really wanted to shave some time off my produ my production <laughs> my production time um and they offered to help but you know i can look back at that and be like that's good but what I've done here, oh, it's nice. But again, it's like, it feels like I blinked, right? And time passed and I just got better. And it's always nice to have these pictures up to remind, to go back and remind yourself of where you came from and how you're doing. And I mean, sometimes it's, sometimes you find some stuff that you used to do that you still really liked. Like, um, oh God, I can't remember the piece. There have been multiple pieces I've drawn over the years, but I can actually pick a few of my old favorites, especially when I had a bigger roster of characters, and I can be like, I really like how I did the face in this one. You know, maybe I should build upon that, or I'll look at an old character design and be like, man, that was really good. I really need to bring that back. It's, I don't know, it's it's interesting looking back at your old shit. I wonder if, if uh... <laughs> I wouldn't call us professionals. So I, I, I wonder how professionals feel like, you know, professional artists and musicians and just performers. Like they go back and they look at their old catalog of work. I wonder how, I wonder if they get the same feeling or if it's just completely different the longer you do it, right? It's hard to say, especially because we are such a niche cabal of horny circle drawers. Oh, hell yeah. Horny Circle. <laughs> All right. That's the name of my death metal band. <laughs> I, I think that's also the name of the podcast, is the quote-unquote niche cabal of Horny Circle drawers. <laughs> hey, if, I want, if I'm going to be labeled a Horny Circle drawer, I'll wear that badge with fucking honor. I'll go to Costco. Sorry, I don't have Costco where I live. I'll go to Walmart with that pinned to my fucking shirt. <laughs> I'll, go to, I'll go to Albertsons and throw a temper tantrum. 
I'll go to Base Pro Hunter and get me a <laughs> daggum fishing pole. <laughs> I'm going to save big money at Menards and tell everybody I draw the big tummy on the internet. Dude, what the... <laughs> Them goddamn interwebs. <laughs> Fuck. I, I ain't saying I, I do much, but I got my commissions open on that dang old computer spider web. <laughs> computer spider web. <laughs> oh, holy it's a living. Fuck. Oh, holy shit. That, that killed me. Good job. <laughs> Good work. Good work, oh, sir. Fuck. All right, let's try to get this on track because that fuck that was awful. <laughs> uh, here's here's a here's a question that I like I like to ask because it, it speaks a lot to everyone's sort of sort of things, but of not necessarily of your artistic influences, but like what what in media do you think inspired you the most as like a kid and young adult, like movies, oh, books, cartoons. I have been dying to tell you this. Inuyasha. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> to give you a little context, before I became a full-fledged furry, I had a character who was a demi character, right? So, like, they're, like, half wolf, half person, whatever. Perfect. Um and it's literally all because I used to really, 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 really like Inuyasha. But it's unfortunate as an adult, and I try and watch old Inuyasha, and I just frown <laughs> because it's bad. But <laughs> but that stuck with me. So <laughs> a lot of 80s and 90s anime actually is probably a huge... It, it, I mean, it's got to be. Like, you can look at my stuff in the gallery, and you can, like, point at a certain part and be like, yeah, that looks like it came from Yu-Gi-Oh! Or, yeah, that hairstyle looks like it was inspired by something from Yu Yu Hakusho. And, you know, I don't mind to be that. Like, um, I've done a couple of those memes where people will, like, where you post and it's like, oh, what about my styles? Recognizable, lol. And everybody, if it's not the smug looks, which I'm proud of those, if it's not the smug looks the characters have, it's always the aesthetic and the style that I go for. They're always like, man, you really nail that anime tile shit type <laughs> shit really well. And, like, you know, I look at what I'm doing, and I see this weird hodgepodge of, like, you know, anime-inspired eyes, and, like, you know, since it's a since it's a furry, you can't really animate. Uh, anime, I'm trying to come up with, like, a combination of, like, com- <sighs> it's not, ex- you can't exactly turn an animal into an anime, <laughs> right? But you can take parts of your style and make them look anime and for the most part i guess i nailed the faces down um pretty well now that being said i'd be remiss to say that modern anime hasn't influenced me at all either um i don't really watch a lot of shit like i don't i don't i do not consume a lot of media and it's mostly just because i'm always working or i'm always playing video games i think video games are mostly it's my relaxed period, and that's mostly the media I consume. So it, when mm-hmm. I watch an anime, it's got to be damn fucking good, and I almost <laughs> always pull from that anime, right? Like, I started re-watching Yu-Gi-Oh! The original, like, first three seasons, question mark, yeah. around that, before they got to the Duelist Academy. Um, I started watching those, I would say, before I did D's new reference sheet, and I really actually liked how they did the eyes like you know how seto kaiba's eyes and yugi's eyes it's like the pupils are white and they have like a bold black outline around them right yeah i i took that and i had also been watching demon slayer (laughs) at the time and have you ever seen demon slayer uh i have only seen the clips of the pig-headed guy laughing like a fucking insane person (laughs) and okay that one scene where he spins around that kid's neck like eight times and kills him really you really should watch it. I recommend. Uh, the Weebs will call it Kimetsu no Yaiba is a really good show. Demon Slayer. Check it out. Uh, um, but the way they do their eyes is really interesting. So I don't know I don't know what inspired it on the artist's standpoint, but their eyes always seem very geometric, and they're always doing something weird with the pupils for a lot of the characters. 
either they'll have them, they'll be like a plus sign or like an X or some shit. It's interesting. But the shape of the eyes is what got me. So the main character, Tanjiro, his eye is like an octagon. Like it's got, and maybe not, maybe not complete eight sides, but it has the shape to it and these edges, these hard edges. It's not round. It's got, it has corners. It's so cool. I thought that was sick. I was like, I've never seen anyone else do that. Right? So I decided to do that with D. Um, So he's got the Yu-Gi-Oh pupils, but his eye, if you, I mean, I haven't really been too true to it, so that might be why. But if you look at a lot of the more recent drawings that show his eyes, I tried to make them come up straight and then sort of taper off to form like a, like a hexagon shape almost, just because I thought that was so neat. I was like, holy shit, that's so cool. And then because I've watched a lot of shit like My Hero and, um, you know, JoJo's recently, I have tried to incorporate more, like, I try not to go too ham with it because too much detail can ruin a piece, but I've tried to incorporate more detail lines, you know, I've tried to change up my expressions more, play more with dynamic posing. I remember... (laughs) There was a pink sweater meme we did, or that Twitter did. Why did I say we? I guess I'm part of the collective now. Um, Twitter's got to you. Oh, fuck, I'm part of the hive mind. Help! <laughs> I'm sprouting little blue feathers everywhere. Oh, shit, I'm turning into a bird. What the fuck? But, <laughs> but um, so Twitter did this, like, uh, this is sort of a tangent, but it does rely on, you know, influence. Twitter uh, did this meme with, like, a pink sweater. And, like, it had, it, it literally just covered the titties. That's all it was. Like, it, it had, like, a window in between where the tits were. So, like, you know, there was, like, belly room and stuff. Um, I, I actually, I, I had been watching JoJo's Part 5 at that point. So I was like, I'm going to do this meme. But I want to play with, with some aesthetic choices here. So um, it, I did add some extra detail into D. Um but not only that, but I played with the background. So instead of a traditional background, I used <laughs> I used a seamless pattern, and then I fucked with it a little bit with some effects to make it look like it was. Uh, you know how when they shot off the stands when they before like before and after commercial break. Yeah, it kind of was kind of like that, but it was like this really nice pattern. I can't. You can find it in my gallery, uh, for <laughs> vanity slash dogcore. It's there. Um, and, you know, I even found a way to recreate the uh, menacing t- text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I threw that on it, too. And it turned out really good. I was like, fuck yeah. Um, and I also played with colored lines in that piece. That was that was actually kind of fun. I'd like to go back and do more shit like that. But uh, Damn, you changed up a lot. Yeah, um, that's sort of the thing. I tried to, even if it's not super noticeable to the people who are like looking at it and probably just you know beating their meat to what i'm drawing um i try really hard just for my own satisfaction to do something different if i can with every piece you know some things some things you just can't compromise like especially you know if if it's something for a commission um but but almost every personal piece i do i try to incorporate something new whether it's from an anime or just something I think would be neat to pull off. Um, hey, that's that's good. Yeah. It's it's something I've said often in here in many different forms, but I think it's important as an artist, even one who does the not safer work, that you <laughs> do things that make your soul horny. Oh, yes. I actually did one of my very first safe for work commissions. <gasps> SQ, I know. Jack Hughes. But- I know, but out of the ones that I've done so far, it's my favorite because of how much work I put into it and how fucking sick it looks. Like, I actually, have you seen it? If you haven't, I can send it to you real quick. I probably have, but send it to me anyway. Yeah, I mean... And I'll describe it visually. (laughs) And I'll describe it visually. But, um, this was actually a very fun commission to work on. And the guy who, the guy who had me work on it you know, he didn't want, he didn't ask for anything too particular. He was just like, man, I think it'd be cool to have something that's very reminiscent to a fighting game windscreen. And I was like, 
all right, I can fuck with that. <laughs> so, you know, he, he sent me the pose he wanted, which was very good. That's half the reason why this looks as dynamic as it does. Send kids if you if you buy art, send your artists really good references. I promise you, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth thirty minutes you're going to spend googling. Um, but you know, he sent me that, and then it all just sort of fell in place. I drew it in a back alley because I was like, where else is the fight going to take place realistically? Um, I tried to think of some stuff to make it seem more video gamey. I played with some, some, uh, I tried to, instead of using, you know, pre-made textures, I tried to like get it like the spray can tool in, uh, Clip Studio. Fancy. And yeah, I, I dude, I went fucking ham. I, <laughs> if I pulled this up in Clip Studio, it might take it a second to load because there is a lot of just if, like, just fucking layers and layers of like effects to get this to look the way I wanted it to. But it was so fucking worth it, man. It was so fucking worth it. <laughs> like, it, I, I hate to, I hate to, you know, pat my own ass, but if I was making, if I was updating my portfolio, this would probably go in my uh, my regular portfolio just because I'm that confident in it. <laughs> that you you have reminded me. I mean, I don't even disagree, and this is not the same thing, but it remind you've reminded me of... An animator whose name I decided not to drop. Uh, infamous animation demo reel. Oh, fucking... <laughs> oh my god, that fucking... Dude, that demo reel is incredible. Like... Uh, oh, so fuck. good. It's so good, and like, what's fucked up is that he had the balls to put all of that NSFW shit in there. And it's it, good animation. It is. It is. And, you know, maybe maybe the rules for animation and, you know, your portfolio are completely different um, than, you know, if you were trying to apply for a graphic design job or something. But holy fuck, yeah. man. <laughs> that was but awesome. I, I think they are different from animation. And the... I have heard, like, stories of people saying, like, yeah, you know, all that matters is that you can get the, the work that they need done, so they're less picky about stuff like that. But also, the sheer amount of, like, professional animators that have a a history of porn, it goes all the way back to Osama Tezuka. You know, dude, call it a hunch, but I think artists just like drawing porn. <laughs> it goes back to, it goes back to the fucking cavemen. <laughs> the wildly horny like fertility idols that we find like my god art is inexorably tied with the horny and always has been and always will be it's absolutely true and anyone who denies it is a coward and a fool yeah how dare you censor my big tummy i i, yeah. I will i will hunt you down and i will say hey I'm just a fertility goddess, baby. <laughs> I will, I will, I will pull the circle tool that I use to make all of my art off of the thing and throw it at you like a big chakram and cut you off at the knees, like a big chakram. <laughs> Dude, that'd be actually a really cool idea for a character. Um, it's like a digital, fighting like with a fucking digital... art tools. Yeah, out, dude, I'd fuck with that. Like, make a character in, like, a really obscure niche fighting game on Steam that you could sell for, like, a dollar. Um, and, like, one of the characters is just, like, a digital artist, you know? And all of their tools are, or all of their, like, attacks are just references to the Photoshop tools. I yeah. think that'd be they, fucking sweet. They'd splash you with a big paint bucket. Their grapple would be a lasso tool. They'd hit you with the magic wand and a little uh, invisible, like, bunch of lines would hold the character in place fuck yes see that's that's the kind of shit we need hook e loof you're hired <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, emphasizing the e really does add to it like <laughs> yeah, the, e, the e that's not there <laughs> <laughs> it's canon now <laughs> my name is half vowels and none of them are an e <laughs> Well, I mean, to be fair, my name is literally three letters, so I guess yeah. I can't say anything. <laughs> your, your name is 66% E. <laughs> I only... <laughs> trivia, I only added the E's because I thought it would be really awkward for people to spell just the letter D. Because, like... Because <laughs> I've had people who would do that, and 
yeah, I think someone actually commented on it. They're like, man, is that is that really it? And I was like, yeah. And they, like, they never knew how to pronounce it. So I was like, well, I'll just make it easy on them and just add, like, is it phonetics? The sound of how you say a word? Yeah. Yeah, I so I just... Yeah, so I just added the E's in because, you know, phonetically, that's how I'd want it to sound, so I may as well just spell it the exact same way. These people have clearly not watched One Piece and all the characters whose middle name is D. Just D. <laughs> Doesn't even stand for nothing. I'm actually a One Piece character. Like, my whole name is just D, so I'm the most powerful One Piece character. I'd believe that. The D's, <laughs> the D middle name in One Piece is tied directly to how powerful you are. That's right, isn't it? Because, yeah. um... You know, I'm not I'm not well versed in One Piece, so forgive me if I'm wrong. But <laughs> isn't it like isn't it like um there are a bunch of like pirates, like I know Monkey D. Luffy's one. Uh Chase, I think, had yeah. a D in his name as well. Is that right? I think so. And there was some third guy that I don't know anything about. He looks like Sanji, but he has a top hat. Um and by son looks like Sanji, he's got blonde hair or some shit. I don't remember. I just saw bits of the frames in the flashback. Um but aren't they, like, weren't they trained by a certain pirate, and he's, like, really strong, and he also has that D middle name? Yeah, that, that was the King of the Pirates, Gold Roger. Fun fact, his name is not Gold, it's Gold D. Wow. Fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. You know Oda's too busy making, like, <laughs> making the girls, like, almost half titty to really be that concerned about naming conventions. Like, <laughs> what? I you you can you can clown on Oda's style as much as you want, and by all means, you definitely should. You definitely should when you see <laughs> what fucking some of them look like post time skip. But there's a buck wild amount of body lawyer representation in One Piece. Hell yeah! They've got they got big girls too. They've got skinny girls. God, there's a lot of them. But there's like absolutely there's little skinny nothing boys and whatever the fuck Usopp is. So also, can we take yeah. a quick bathroom break? Uh, I actually was about to more or less wrap it up because I, I am a- approaching the limit of what I can edit without my editing stuff crashing. <laughs> ah, shit. All right. Well, lay it on me. What you got? Uh, I don't know. I feel like this has been both a very deep and also occasionally silly, silly episode of Subject High. And I'm, I'm glad that we got to touch on so much of what sort of makes you, you as an artist. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. And th- like, just thanks for letting me ramble. I feel like I don't get to talk <laughs> about this shit a lot. Um, I, you know, I tend to keep to myself a lot of the time. So it's I nice to it. sort of flex my brain a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally makes sense to me. But uh, before before we close things out as we approach the hour mark, uh, is there any one or anything that you would like to give a little shout out to while you're here? Shout out to mom and dad. Hope you never listen to this. <laughs> God. Please, please don't. <laughs> please don't. Please don't help me to everyone. Uh, Alright. Well. <laughs> fuck. This episode started off so abruptly, and now I'm struggling to remember how I finished these. I'm trying to get back into that groove. It probably has something to do with my name is Hookaloof, and I'm a gamer, and I'm a bear in 24, and, uh, uh, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've actually been 24 on this podcast for longer than I've been 24 in real life. My because God. Because <laughs> the, the Rolling Stone article that I, I got that intro line from, I told the lady I was 23 and she wrote down 24, so not the best <laughs> journalist, but I still appreciate being in that article. <laughs> hey. Hey, it's still cool that you did it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I didn't mean to shit on you, Miss Miss Lady, whose name I don't remember, and you probably wouldn't want to be shouted out on this podcast anyway. There's horny people on here. Yeah, you don't want to be anywhere. You don't want to be anywhere near me. I'm a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, as 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 this podcast is wont to do, it has made Jesus cry yet again, and so I must I must adjourn. This has been Subject High, the only podcast on the internet with the guests who do. do. And I hope you have a good day or night. Thanks for listening. I love you. Bye.